You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are talking for you on Friday the 12th of January. PM Modi inaugurates Atal Setu, India's longest sea bridge. Pakistan's ex-PM Nawaz Sharif to launch election campaign as front runner. And rights body flags worsening Taliban repression in Afghanistan. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurated Mumbai Trans Harbour Link or the Atal Setu, India's largest sea bridge. The engineering marvel has been named Atal Setu in honour of former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. In the first phase, the 21.8 km long sea bridge will shorten the journey between South and Navi Mumbai from 2 hours to about 20 minutes. It has been built at a whopping cost of around over 21,000 crores. It will be thrown open for public from Saturday. In a public meeting later in the day, PM Modi also dedicated several other infrastructure projects in Maharashtra state. India's Supreme Court on Friday declined to stay the newly passed act that drops the Chief Justice of India from a panel empowered to choose a Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioners. However, it has issued a notice to the centre asking for a response by April. The new law states that Chief Election Commissioner and other election commissioners shall be appointed by the President on the recommendation of a selection committee consisting of the Prime Minister, the Leader of Opposition and a Union Cabinet Minister to be nominated by the Prime Minister. Several petitions have been filed in the Apex Court amid a political row over dropping the Chief Justice from the panel. The opposition has accused PM Modi's government of having defied the Supreme Court by dropping the CGI from the selection panel. Moving on, Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, whose party PMLN is considered a front-runner to win general elections in February, will kick off his campaign next week, senior party leaders have said. Development comes days after the Supreme Court cleared Nawaz Sharif to run for a fourth term. Analysts believe the South Asian nation's powerful military has thrown its backing to Sharif after it was locked in a standoff with his main rival and former Premier Imran Khan, who has been jailed and disqualified from contesting. That gives Nawaz Sharif an edge in a country where army generals mostly decide on making or breaking governments elected by the civil polls. Meanwhile, the leaders of the Baloch sit-in protest in Islamabad have appealed for global solidarity and intervention, fearing state-sponsored violence amid intimidation by Pakistani authorities. A report. Fearing state-sponsored violence, the Baloch Ekjeti Committee, which is spearheading the sit-in protest in Islamabad against enforced disappearances, has appealed for international support. The protest leaders have cited arrests of Zaheer Baloch and other activists as proof of lawlessness, as their whereabouts were unknown until the judiciary intervened and ordered their release. Several FIRs have also been registered against the protesters, including sedition charges, since they began their sit-in three weeks ago. Meanwhile, protests have continued across Balochistan in their support, as they have put a spotlight on rights violations in the region. Earlier on Wednesday, UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders also said that spurious criminal complaints against peaceful protesters should be dropped. The Pakistan government has termed the protest as mere propaganda, refusing to address their grievances so far. The Human Rights Watch in its latest report released on Thursday has highlighted that the Taliban has intensified its suppression of human rights, especially women's rights in Afghanistan. The report states that Afghanistan is the only country in the world where women are officially banned from education and the ban on women's work has deprived many Afghan women of their livelihoods. It further said the Taliban has increasingly enforced repressive policies in 2023, including the suppression of women's protests, the arbitrary detention of women activists, the disappearance of some women after detention. Despite promising a moderate administration, the Taliban has been imposing strict rules according to its strict interpretation of the Islamic law. Due to these regressive policies, no country has formally recognized Taliban's regime so far. 
Moving on, Bangladesh re-elected Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Thursday assumed office for fourth straight term after a party won an election boycotted by the main opposition party, BNP. In a ceremony at the presidential palace, Hasina was administered the oath of office by President Mohammad Shahbuddin. Hasina's 36-member cabinet was also sworn into office during the ceremony. Overhauling a cabinet from last term, PM Hasina's new Council of Ministers has 14 new faces as cabinet ministers and seven others as state ministers. Hasina first became prime minister in 1996. This will be her fifth term overall. She has been credited with turning around the economy, though critics have also accused her of human rights violations and suppressing dissent. And shopkeepers in India's holy town of Ayodhya are doing brisk business as the consecration ceremony of the Grand Ram Temple draws close. Devotees from far and wide are visiting Ayodhya, the birthplace of Lord Ram, and are thronging markets to buy items related to the Hindu god. Caps with proclamation Jai Shri Ram or Victory to Lord Ram that cost less than $5 are a hit among the devotees. हमें सब जैसी राम के इसका जहां नारा जब लगाएंगे तो एकदम रोमांस अपने आप में बॉडी में इफेक्ट पैदा होता है अयोध्या हैज रिसीव्ड अ न्यू एयरपोर्ट एंड रोड्स इन अ 6 बिलियन डॉलर फेसलिफ्ट ऑन फ्राइडे पीएम मोदी अनाउंस दैट ही विल अंडरटेक एन 11 डे अनुष्ठान और रिचुअल्स अहेड ऑफ द जनवरी 22 कंसेक्रेशन सेरेमनी व्हिच ही विल बी लीडिंग द रूलिंग बीजेपी हैड मेड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द टेंपल अ की कैंपेन प्रॉमिस फॉर डेकेड्स that's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.